Okay, so another video in the health impacts and today we're going to look at changes in skin, tendon, tendon and muscle due to steroid use. Now the common one, acne. Uh, this is probably one of the most common side effects with steroid use at all and there are several causes. The main cause is the fact that the sebaceous gland, which is a gland that produces oil for our skin, has androgen receptors. Steroids have an effect on this and cause this gland to grow. Therefore, it produces more oil. Now, to some degree, a 5-alpha uh, reductase like finasteride can help because it will prevent the conversion of test to DHT, dihydrotestosterone. Um, but it's not foolproof. Really? The only thing you can do is increase your personal hygiene, exfoliate and shower more regularly and keep your skin as clean as possible. There will stop the oil building up and dirt getting trapped and therefore acne. However, hormone imbalances can also cause acne, so it's worth managing your estrogen correctly and keeping things in some form of balance as best you can. And there's one other common cause, and this is stress. Now, our central nervous systems get stressed by training. They also get stressed by heavy metal contamination, particularly in UGLs. UGLs have high levels of heavy metals, unlike pharma. Now, this can cause rosacea. Generally, it will be facial, um, and it is treatable, but it does take antibiotics, and it does take quite a long time. The only downside is that once you've got it, you will then fall, be more susceptible to it, and it will come back at other times and periods of stress within your life as well. There's not really great deal you can do. However, Himalayan salt baths will help draw heavy metals out, as will a product called EDT. Now, abscesses, those sort of infections. Generally speaking, most abscesses are caused by user hygiene. Now, plenty of people shout off about the gear being bad, but it is not that common. Usually, it's because they fucked up. Now, if you've taken three, four injections out of a vial on the fifth one, you get an abscess. There's nothing wrong with the gear. It's you. You're ballsed up. But people don't like to admit this, so it's easy to blame the gear as being bad. However, abscesses can also form another way. And they generally result in a staphylococcus. Or a, oh, hang on, you know I'm bad at pronunciations, bear with me. Aureus infection. And this is internal bleeds. This is when you clip a vein or an artery and you get some blood pooling. Now, if post-injection you've got a swelling, it's not uncommon, it can happen quite a bit. Generally, that's a pooling of hormone. Some heat and massage, it's going to disperse, everything's going to be fine. However, if you find the lump enlarges or it gets angry, it's accompanied by heat itching or a change in skin texture or color the chances are you've got something a little bit more funky going on now this isn't really medical advice but it was something that was told me a very long time ago by a very old school doorman and has proved to work very effective what put it in will get it out and by that what i mean is if you've got a swelling a lump and you fear that there's some infection going on in there stick a needle in there and aspirate and you'll soon, one, you'll find out it's an infection because you'll see pus or you'll see congealed blood. If it's an internal bleed, chances are that will be more in congealed blood. But it is better out than in. You're probably going to need antibiotics as well to help with deal with the infection. But aspiration will go a long way to clearing it up very, very quickly. This has saved me from an abscess on a couple of occasions. And touch wood, I've never actually had an abscess. They are not pleasant. They have to be removed. They can't uh, be dealt with any other way. And the result generally is a hole. You can't stitch this hole up. It has to grow from the inside out. So you're going to have a lot of packings changed. Um, and it's going to take a long time to heal. Okay. So a true abscess it basically means that the foreign matter, the infection, your body encapsulates in a hard shell. That's why it has to be physically removed because chemicals, antibiotics and such like can't penetrate that shell to deal with the infection. Certain lumps and bumps can be drained, um, but full-blown abscess is going to have to be cut out. Now, one other effect, other effect on muscles is calcification 
uh, the medical term is myocystis ossifications. Basically, any trauma to a muscle, be it from a needle or be it from an impact, can cause muscle fibre to calcify. Now, obviously, repetitive injection is going to start to cause that tissue to calcify. So that's why it's important to rotate sites, and it's also handy to have some deep tissue work as well. Calcification can be broken down. It is painful, and it is a bit of a long-winded process, but deep physical tissue massage will break it down. So to avoid it, regular massages and rotate your sides. And the other one is tendon integrity. Now it is a medical fact that steroids do alter type 1 collagen synthesis. However, when ruptures have been tested post-injury, they have found that the tendon integrity is normal. The reason for this is that training offsets any negative impact AAS has. And as a result, they will not weaken your tendons in reality because you're training, you're physically active, you're using weight, and they will strengthen tendons. However, AAS causes muscle strength to grow or increase at quite a fast rate. Unfortunately, tendons don't gain strength at the same rate. They are slower. And this, in direct action, can cause tears. So those steroids will not weaken tendons in the real world because the training offsets are. They can cause issues with the muscle being overly strong for its attaching tendon. This is just controlled by being sensible in the gym. Doing some volume work and getting that tendon strength up, it takes time. So that's it. That's pretty much those bases covered. So like I said, spots, health regime, hygiene, that's your best fight there. You get a lump or a bump and it's red, angry or inflamed, get a needle in it and see what's going on. And generally abscesses are caused by user error and not by bad gear. Don't get me wrong, there are exceptions, but a lot of people that I've seen shouting about this gear causing abscess, that gear causing abscess, when you get to the bottom of it, you find out that that wasn't the case. Calcification, so rotate your sites and deep tissue massage, and just train sensibly to avoid uh, tendon injury. Okay, so we've only got one section left, and that's mental health. Now, I've done quite a bit on this over the last couple of months, but I'm going to do a little bit more. Uh, I recently got a review of several studies covering the impact of ASS on mental health. So I'm going to use that uh, and go through some case studies and go more in depth of actual real world events with it. Um, I'm also scheduling an interview with somebody who has openly admitted that they are addicted. Now most of us will say that this isn't possible. But this would appear to be a real live case of someone who is genuinely addicted to ASS. To AAS, sorry. So hopefully I'm scheduling that within the next week or two and we'll get that up as well. Right, so I will see you soon. Take care and have a good weekend.